and uh, welcome back to the channel. So uh, last year I did a video called uh, Shot of the Year, which was my sort of personal choice of uh, a year of landscape photography that I was obviously involved in. And uh, I thought, well, let's keep the tradition going. It's that time of year again. Let's have a look back at 2021. And although it was a very tough year for a lot of people, it was also an amazing year in terms of photography. Uh, one plus one advantage of the global pandemic is you get to see more and more of your own backyard. And uh, wow, we saw some places, did some things, uh, did some amazing trips. So let's get into it. Um, the very beginning of 2021. Uh, this is going to be a collection of some of my picks for the year. I'm not going to have one shot per month. I'm just going to put up a bunch of shots that are really my my picks for the uh, for the the 12 month period that was 2021. Right at the very beginning of the year, the very first day of the year, we did a trip to an area called Cathedral Rocks. Now this is a couple of hours south of uh, Sydney. Um, quite a quite a, a popular place among photographers. We went down there for the very first shoot of the year and oh my goodness, Cathedral Rocks has never delivered such an amazing set of uh, photographic conditions. We had the sunrise to die for, the tide was right, the conditions were right. Uh, it was an easy pick. In fact, of the probably of the three shots that I really liked from that particular shoot, uh, I couldn't pick one. So I'm going to put all three up here um, just to reminisce and have a look back at that very first day of 2021. We obviously thought it was going to be a very good year. <laughs> it was a mixture. Let's have a look at these three shots to begin with. to put up was uh, was yeah, was also shot in January and it's uh, an area I had never shot before and I, I very rarely shoot the sun uh, we normally shoot sunrise conditions well before the sun is up uh, normally uh, we start at um, astronomical twilight we'll go to blue hour golden hour once the sun comes up it's normally all over we're packing up heading off for coffee this particular day, um, we had a bit of haze sitting over the horizon and I shot um, with uh, a group of friends up at an area uh, on the northern beaches of Sydney called uh, South Curl Curl. Very nice rock platform there, um, but as the sun came up, uh, I actually handheld this shot and uh, it was a fairly quick shutter speed and um, I'll put the the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 shot stats uh, just below the shot, so you can actually see uh, what the shot stats were. But as I took the shot, um, a sea eagle flew directly over the sun. Um, I, I probably got two or three shots of the sea eagle flying over the sun. This was the absolute pick of the bunch. Um, it was a shot that was quite memorable for me. And as I said, I normally don't shoot directly into the sun. I loved it. Uh, and I just thought it was worth sharing as well. So here's one from also at the end of January 2021 from South Coroco. So yeah, really, I, I really liked that shot of the sun. It was the one that this stood out for me. Um, also early on in the year, uh, I got invited down uh, with the, uh, some of the Sony people, uh, had a bit of a group session um, and uh, we shot some fireworks. Now Sydney Harbour is uh, world famous for having some of the best fireworks displays on the planet uh, and uh, I had never shot any of them. I've never shot fireworks before in my life and uh, it was just a good opportunity to go down and do some practice, to do something that I'd never done before and um, the Sony guys are great. In fact, let me borrow one of their lenses which was the uh, the 135 millimeter prime lens. Now, I don't currently own the 135 prime so it was a good opportunity to try it. It was the perfect focal length from where we were shooting across the harbour towards the Opera House and Circular Quay. 
Uh, and uh, I absolutely love the results. In fact, a couple, I think a couple of the shots uh, got voted, you know, some of the shots of the evening, but um, uh, that wasn't the reason I was there. I was just there to have a look at practice some of the shots. Uh, here's a couple of shots from that night uh, with the Opera House in focus. Uh, the, the, most of the fireworks, I think, were between the Opera House and our own circular key. So it really put the Opera House in the, in the focus there with some of the city uh, buildings behind the actual fireworks. Anyway, here's a couple of shots there. I'll put the stats up for the shots as well so you can see uh, how they were shot. Enjoy. fireworks. Uh, we also did a trip early in the year uh, to an area called Canangra Walls. Now this is in the Blue Mountains uh, National Park on the sort of south side of the Blue Mountains National Park. Uh, incredible area. Um, there, it, it's fairly out of the way so you really have to sort of either stay locally out there or there is a, there's a campsite uh, very close to where you can shoot as well. Um, we camped um, and uh, again had a, a group of the Australian Photography Masters uh, people on the trip which made it really enjoyable. Um, we didn't get absolutely the best conditions for shooting but the scene more than makes up for it. Uh, big shout out to Michelle for uh, doing a little bit of modelling on the actual uh, peak of Kananga Walls there uh, and also uh, to uh, my good friend Eric for also <laughs> doing a pose for one of these shots. So you see one shot which is a portrait shot here which really shows this overhang of the cliff, absolutely spectacular place. Uh, and then the second shot is a seven shot panorama which sort of sh takes in the whole valley what I particularly liked about the panorama was the um, the, the, the sun the, the sunrise morning light lighting up the cliffs on the left hand side as well. Unbelievable place. Um, Kananga Walls, back early in the year. Check these two out. This is, uh, this is called Bicentennial Park. Um, I actually live not too far from here, and, and actually a stone's throw from here was where the uh, Sydney Olympics were held. So a lot of uh, stadiums and, and, uh, that are still in use today. Anyway, so Conangra Walls, uh, you just saw. Uh, what we also did was, uh, early on in the year, around March, was we, uh, we spent some time down at uh, Kosciuszko National Park. Now, Kosciuszko National Park is absolutely spectacular. We, we did a, a, another camp overnight stay. Uh, we did a hike down a gorge, lots of river crossings. And at the very end of the walk, or the end of the hike, was uh, an amazing uh, waterfall. I've done a couple of videos on this uh, throughout the year, uh, which would have been around about March, April. There was so many shots that came out of that trip, but there was one in particular that I uh, really liked um, of, the, of the main waterfall at the end of the hike, uh, where I took out a lot of the features around the waterfall and just really focused on the falls themselves. It was probably one of my picks uh, of the whole trip there, and I thought I should share that with you because for me it was one of the highlights of the year. So Kosciuszko National Park, uh, here's that shot of the waterfall check as well. It's just an incredible place, Kosciuszko National Park. I thoroughly recommend it if you uh, if you get uh, an opportunity to spend some time down there. 
Um, also, uh, on the subject of waterfalls, now we shot a few waterfalls this year, and uh, one that I had shot many times before, but I had never actually been down to this part of the waterfall, uh, is Summersby Falls. The Summersby Falls is not much more than an hour uh, north of Sydney. Um, Summersby Falls has this incredible uh, cave uh, which, which sits under one of the waterfalls. Um, if you're very careful, you can actually wriggle and get through and stand under the cave. Now, and there is actually standing room in the cave. Um, I was in the company of a very, very large spider, which I think is in the video, so go and check that video out. But um, the waterfall was absolutely spectacular. Uh, and I was able to do, I think this is another seven shot panorama across the waterfall uh, because it's obviously fairly sizable uh, from, from end to end. We had good water flow that day, we had good light coming in the falls. Um, it was absolutely a highlight of the year and I, should, I haven't yet, but I should probably print this one at some stage. So, Summersby Falls, uh, this is about April of 2021. Let's check this one. Okay, so we're sort of getting midway through 2021 now, uh, and there was a very, very easy pick, uh, another waterfall here uh, in Blue Mountains National Park. It's called the Pool of Siloam, and uh, really quite easy to get to. Um, not a very difficult walk down from the car park. Again, I did a, I've done a video on this one, so if, uh, I, I might put a link to some of these videos uh, in the description below if you want to see this. Um, but the, the waterfall is absolutely spectacular. It has a really nice curving uh, sort of set of steps uh, that take you up through the, through the, the waterfall and, off, uh, and do a hike. Uh, and um, I hadn't seen a shot with this. I'm sure everyone's done this shot. I hadn't seen one with the steps in this angle. And then the second shot I'm going to pick out from this shoot uh, was where I managed to pick up one of the ferns and use, just use that as some foreground interest with the main falls in the background. I, I love these two shots equally, and uh, I thought I should share this with you as well. So, the Pool of Siloam um, in uh, Blue Mountains National Park. Let's check these two out. Now, June is uh, the month of my birthday, and um, this year for my birthday, uh, I decided it would be a very good idea uh, to go and visit Uluru. Uh, now, I've done a couple of videos on the Uluru trip, and uh, if you haven't seen those, I recommend. Uh, we, we, for a uh, for a photographer, the I think we only spent three nights uh, at Uluru, and the three or four days that we were there. Uh, we could not have had better conditions for photography. Um, they were absolutely incredible. We got galaxy shots, we got sunrise and sunset. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, we also spent uh, one day uh, where we did a trip up to Kings Canyon. Kings Canyon um, is uh, a fair drive, about a three hour drive north of Uluru. Um, we did it very, very early in the morning. If you do that trip, I, I thoroughly recommend it, but please keep a lookout for wildlife on the road. Uh, we had wild horses on the road right in front of us as we were driving uh, at a fair speed in the morning. Um, Kings Canyon was spectacular and there's one of the shots from Kings Canyon that I've put in here, which is one of the water holes I managed to get in one of the caves, thanks very much, uh, get in one of the caves there and, and shoot the water hole with a cave surrounding me as well. Um, but Uluru was very, very special. Uh, if you've never been there, I had never been before and I, I I didn't really get or understand how special Uluru was until I stood right in front of it. The national parks people were incredible to deal with. Um, they were very gracious in, in allowing us to stay in the park and, and shoot the galaxy afterwards. Um, and um, as I said, the conditions could not have been better. So I had planned this trip for a long time, I had planned uh, because I knew when the galaxy was going to be up and, and my plan was to capture the galaxy 
in harmony with Uluru. In other words, so Uluru was center frame and my, my plan was to capture the galaxy over Uluru and conditions worked out for us. So I managed to capture it uh, with the galaxy. We captured some sunset shots. We did Kings Canyon. Without me going on any more about it, it's a special place. I thoroughly re recommend you go there and experience it for yourself. Here's some shots from that trip. So we arrived back in Sydney from the Uluru trip uh, and about two weeks later Sydney went into a lockdown situation. Um, the, um, the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic had taken hold in Sydney. Uh, there were quite a few cases. Sydney went into a complete lockdown. Now that lockdown lasted for four months. So there was a four month gap, a four month window where uh, you really couldn't travel uh, outside of your own particular sort of local government area, um, which meant it was quite restrictive for photography. When that four month uh, window ended, the first place I went off to shoot was literally around the corner from here. Uh, there's a shipwreck that sits in Sydney Harbour and uh, it was the very first uh, shoot that I managed to do when we came out of lockdown, this would have been in September, uh, and actually got some really nice conditions. I wanted to put that up because for me it was a memorable shot again. Uh, I really need to shoot the shipwreck more often because it's a stunning little place. Uh, we've got good conditions in the sky. Check it out. Here's the, uh, the shipwreck in Sydney Harbour. Okay, we're getting there. Um, we did another trip. Uh, we had had this trip planned for many months. Uh, way in the far west of New South Wales is an area called Mungo National Park. Uh, it's almost at the border between New South Wales and South Australia. Mungo National Park is absolutely incredible. This, this has taken thousands of years to develop to the, the conditions that it's currently in. What I mean by that is the, the weather patterns uh, have been blowing the, the sands uh, at the edge of uh, Mungo Lake, uh, creating an area that is commonly known as the Walls of China. Um, there's a lot of history as to why it's called the Walls of China, but you can research that yourself, go and Google it. But um, we visited the Walls of China and you can actually only uh, access the, the um, the area of the walls of China properly if you have a guide. So we um, engaged uh, a guide for a sunset tour. Uh, the guide was amazing, knew all the history of the, uh, the park and the, and the area uh, and allowed us to take some shots uh, whilst we were there. This place is unbelievable. The, the shots that you get there are like a, a, a Martian landscape. Uh, like nothing else that you'll see in any of the other areas around. So Munga National Park, uh, the Walls of China, uh, this was shot around uh, October and uh, incredible place. Not the easiest place to get to because it's so far from Sydney, uh, but absolutely worth every minute we spent there. Check out a few shots from Munga National Park. <laughs>
Okay, that was Mungo National Park. And I'm actually, I haven't done a video on Mungo yet, but I do have some footage uh, and some more shots that I'm going to put up in a separate video. So look out for that one coming uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, after Mungo National Park, we actually visited Menindee Lake. Now, Menindee Lake uh, right now is at about 105% uh, capacity, uh, which is incredible. The, the lake is a huge body of water. Uh, and uh, whilst 105% sounds like it's a great idea, it actually does, because it's so over, um, uh, over capacity, it actually does damage some of the banks around the lake. So we were very fortunate because when we were there, uh, we managed to get down on the edge of the lake to uh, shoot some of the dead trees that are partially submerged along the lake edge. Now, I've just done a video on this very recently, uh, where I put some of these shots up. I've got one of those shots here, and I've got another shot that I took in the daytime, uh, which you haven't seen yet. But um, I really like the shot. I had a, I had a 10 stop ND filter on this shot, so it's a very long exposure. But it's in the daytime, and the clouds are actually moving uh, at a fair rate. So you'll see streaks in the sky where the clouds were. Uh, I also wanted to try and um, flatten out the lake itself, but the lake was quite muddy, so it was this sort of uh, very milky looking silt that was on the, in the lake, so it almost looks like a lake full of milk. Very interesting um, uh, result that I got from the shot, but I loved it because the, the dead trees don't move in the wind, uh, everything else looks calm, uh, and it was a different kind of shot. So here's two shots from uh, Menindee Lake, check them out. back from the Menindee uh, Lake visit, uh, we stopped at a, a place called Kobar. Now Kobar um, had a couple of things to shoot in there, historical sort of things, um, but we went down um, to a, by the side of a lake for a sun, sunrise. It was quite a cold morning and after shooting sunrise at the lake, uh, we turned around because there was so much bird noise going on behind us in the trees, we wondered what on earth is going on. We turned around to see the cutest thing you've ever seen. Uh, I don't do a lot of bird photography, but you couldn't resist this day. The birds had actually bunched up on a branch to keep warm on a cold morning. It was incredible to see. It was incredibly cute. Um, so the first shot was the first thing we saw on a branch with a whole bunch of birds all cuddling up to stay warm. What I then saw was one of the birds in the center flew off and left a gap which meant that the two birds on either side were sort of looking at each other and it was almost a meme and you can almost imagine what these two birds are thinking or saying to each other as the bird in the center flew off. You'll understand when you see the show. Let's go and check these two out. Three to go. Um, what do photographers do when it rains? They shoot waterfalls, of course. Uh, a waterfall I had never been to on the central coast. Um, I was taken there by a good friend, gave me directions, we went down, it was absolutely hammering down. Uh, however, we got some good light, we got a lot of rain, <laughs> we got some good light and it was just one of these little shots that was framed by everything in the scene. So we had uh, we had shrubbery in the bottom of the frame, we had branches that were uh, over the path, waterfall in the centre. One of those shots that I need to print and put on the wall. It was uh, one of those memorable little shots. A nice one for 2021. Check this little waterfall shot out.
uh, two to go. This one is kind of special. This was almost my shot of the year. Um, but for other reasons, it didn't make it. Um, just south of Sydney is an area called uh, Bombo Quarry. It's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mecca for photographers. It's uh, an incredible area, a, a disused quarry, uh, I think from the 1800s. Uh, it's a basalt rock that was being quarried uh, at Bombo. And when the operators of the quarry left, they left uh, a, a wall uh, on the edge towards the sea, which is very craggy and dramatic, very moody, uh, very spooky if you're there in the middle of the night by yourself, by the way. Um, and uh, over the years, part of that wall has come down because the, the, uh, the, the huge tides that come in there have, have battered away at the wall so much that occasionally some parts of the wall have come down. Um, I was down there in December, not that long ago, uh, and uh, was, I, I, I've been there many times, but this was the first time I've actually had good light uh, for a morning shoot at Bomba Quarry. Uh, there's two shots here, one is a landscape shot and one is a portrait shot. Uh, they're both in the same area, which is one of the inlets there at the quarry. Uh, this particular area is synonymous with being uh, what's known as a camera killer. You get closer and closer to the edge uh, and then all of a sudden a wave will come up and uh, completely drown you and your camera and you're calling the insurance company explaining to them why they need to replace your camera. So if you're going to take this uh, shot, particularly the portrait one, you have to get in, get your shot and then move back quickly before this next wave comes in. So. The conditions were so good, it was worth every second of trying to get that shot. So two shots from Bomba Quarry, enjoy. Okay, we're here, uh, shot of the year for 2021. It took a lot of planning uh, for this particular trip. Uh, when I say planning, I mean, we had to make sure that when we, were, when we were at Uluru, we had to make sure the galaxy was gonna be in the right position above the rock that particular night so that we could align everything. I had to make sure we were standing in the right place. Uh, we had to make sure that uh, we were allowed to be in the park in the evening because the park is closed at sunset. We had to make sure of, of quite a lot of things, quite a lot of planning went in, a lot of letters and emails and back and forth and dialogue. There's also no guarantee that you're going to get any kind of conditions to shoot when you're there, of course, because the weather does whatever it likes, as you would well know. Um, we got the Galaxy shots and that was for me was the whole reason we went to Uluru. I got that shot and you've already seen that shot. However, the next morning we went back and we got the most incredible sunrise that you could ever want as a photographer standing, taking shots of Uluru. Um, it's incredible that we had clear skies for a galaxy and a cloudy sky for a sunrise. As I said, it, the, the conditions could not have been better for a photographer. So here we are standing at this very special place with incredible light, the sun just coming over the horizon. And you understand why they call it the red center. We have a red floor in front of us, red dust all over the ground. We have a red rock right in front of us. We have an incredible red sky. Um, a few shades of red as well. The, 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 the sky was obviously orange where the sun was coming up, but it was red over our, over our shoulders and above our heads. It was incredible. The light was amazing. It easily qualified um, as our shot of 2021. So hope you enjoy it. It was my shot of the year. If you like the shots, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great 2022. Cheers. Thank you.